Here we go, here we go. So, welcome back. We've got another Friday session. Uh, I thought it would be great fun to do some 14-1 straight pool break shots. I was thinking about what I could uh, come up with for this week. Um, and I thought that would be a great idea. I still get a lot of requests for straight pool, so I think that's fantastic. In Europe, the game is kind of on a descent for the last, uh, well, a long time actually. So I, it, it, uh, it's really cool to see that still um, diehards, they love the game. They want to get more inside patterns. I'm going to do more pattern trainings in the future. But I thought it would be uh, really cool to do break shots because I learned... Uh, a lot of years ago from a video actually from Mike Siegel he said the difference between getting stuck on smaller runs and bigger runs also has a lot to do with your break shots and I've come to see over the years I've come to see over the years that uh, that he's right you know a lot of amateur players they don't really know how to attack the break shot or they get confused where to aim where to hit the rack uh, they'll miss the ball because they're distracted by the rack. I've also heard that, so uh, challenging things there. So we're going to go over at least 20 break shots, so that's going to be exciting. Um, just a quick heads up, uh, I posted something the other day. Uh, first of all, yesterday we did the draw for the free giveaway for the course, the big course, the Mental Edge for Competitive Pool Players. We had a lot of fun here with Sina and Lena was recording. That's um, in the Facebook feed beneath. You should check it out from two and a half minutes. Sina, I didn't even realize this. She was st sticking her uh, cat doll in the side pocket, man. We looked it back, we, we cracked up. It was funny. Casper Verstegen won the draw. Congrats to him, he's enrolled in the course now. Remember, there's, I said five, there's actually six courses online now with the free course for goal setting, then the big course, and the big course has been split up into four separate sections. So that's six, and the big course, the mental edge still has all the bonuses, bonus videos, workbook, quick learn guides, um, 30 minute Skype, with me to go over your personal situation. So head over to Terminator College to check out those. For more uh, training videos like these lessons, go to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe, that would help a lot. Comment, uh, I, I write back really fast, get a lot of nice comments, so thank you guys for that. Um, I also posted, I do match reviews now. So if you have a match that you have played and you would like some more insight, maybe some, um, you want some tips on push outs, saves, kicks, patterns. I watch the full match, I do a screen recording. I go over a ton of stuff, what you can do. Uh, pause the video with my mouse, I can show you all kind of route safety things. I send you back the video, my rates are really fair. So go for that, that's really cool. Uh, Skype lessons. You can contact me on Facebook, Instagram for any questions you have about any uh, um, any subject that I just mentioned. See if we can set something up. Package deals are available. So a lot of options, guys. Um, so yeah, let's get uh, let's get started with these break shots. Um, now, as you know, I've played straight pool for a lot of years. When we were growing up. Uh, growing up in our late teenage years and uh, early 20s when I came back from my uh, road warrior time in the US early 20s I started playing a lot of straight pool with Alex Lady we were playing a few times a week races to 150 125 and we did this for a long period and we got better and better. In the beginning, we weren't running hundreds. We were running 50s, maybe an 80, then 42 and out. But we kept on with it. We kept on with it. We stuck with it. So we made each other better, right? Then he got uh, to the European finals. He had Ortman beat in the race to 150, missed his final break shot, Alex, and Ortman ran 42 and out or something. And then I got onto my role with. Uh, 
with the Europeans. I won three in a row. And I think I've won seven, seven European straight pool titles now and a world title. Um, so that it's to show you if you dedicate yourself to the game for a longer period, it can really benefit you. And I still love the game uh, competitively and like at the European Championships is still my favorite discipline. Also because it's win or break. That's how I see it. If I'm on, I'm going to shut somebody out. Boom. Like, uh, like all the great straight pool players, they think that way. Like Holman, Ortman, Schmidt, um, Shinagov, Albin. I mean, there's so many great straight pool players out there. If, if we're on, we're shutting you out. One inning, two innings. Boom. So that's the fun of it. So, how do you shut somebody out? You got to have some quality break shots, right? So first, let's talk about... Next to the rack, break shots. And this for me, for the last, man, 15 years, has still been an undecided animal, mystery. And uh, I've tried a lot of systems, and I've asked a lot of, or a lot of, uh, 400 ball runners, um, like the, the straight pool greats that are still alive now. Uh, you have a guy like Cohen, he's run 400 balls. Ortman's run 300 plus, we all know Ortman, right? Schmidt, I've talked with all these guys like, if you're gonna hit the middle balls, what, what do you do? Because the, the danger, the danger, a uh, Holman, of course, straight pool animal, the danger is that we scratch in the corner when we would play this with a stun shot. If you catch the low side of these two balls, you could carry them in the corner. That's the danger. That's what we want to avoid. Another thing we want to avoid is getting stuck in the rack. A lot of amateur players, they hit the break shot too sweet and they get stuck in the rack if they hit this ball or this ball full in the face. We don't want that either. And then thirdly, we don't want to end up with a draw shot frozen on the rail. So there's three kind of tricky things on the side of the rack break shot that we want to avoid. And ideally we want to get to the middle of the table. We want to get a nice spread, right? So over the years I've, I've tried to gather as much info about that break shot as I could. And to tell you the honest truth, I still haven't figured it out, and that's to say, uh, I'm going to get into it, trust me, but there is not one magic formula, in my opinion. If you take Holman, if he's next to the break shot like this, a lot of times he will hammer it with full draw. I've done that for a lot of years, and it gives me a lot of freedom in my mind, mentally, I don't have to think about where I'm going to hit this guy. I set it up. I let my stroke out. Boom! I go full positive energy through the rack. But sometimes you scratch in the side. You scratch off these balls in the corner. And I've done it many times where I hit this rail scratch in the side. So, then maybe you start thinking, hmm, is there another way? Is there something else I can do? So I spoke with Ortman. Oliver Ortman, one of the greats. He said he had a really great system, which I still use as a guideline. If you take the tangent line, right? You have one leg that's going to the pocket, and you see me do this a lot. I'll take one leg aiming to the corner, and I look at the stripe from the cue, and that's my 90 degree line. And I take that to the rack. So here I can see my cue ball would hit low on the 12. Now, here's the kicker. If you're going to hit high on this ball or this ball, or also the first ball, you would hit it with a middle ball. Because the cue ball has a tendency to go in, uh, up into the uh, kitchen and you want to break the speed so you break it with some middle punch if you're going to hit it full in the face i'm going to demonstrate this in a minute you play with stun 
And if you're going to hit it low, you draw it because otherwise you could scratch in the corner. Okay, so I've done this for many years, but here's the kicker. If you're a little bit further out, or if you're playing on new equipment with sliding balls, the cue ball is going to, it's going to, it's going to twist more before it grabs the energy. Plus, so the line is not, it's not a hundred percent. The tangent line, it's going to change. Plus, where you pocket this ball in the corner has a big influence of your tangent line. So, I've come to realize over the year it's a great guideline, but I have to feel what kind of equipment I'm using. Is it damp? Is it slick? And I have to make an adjustment from there. That means, for example, if I would hit low on these balls, it could happen that the, <clears throat> that the cue ball would, it would deviate a little bit and to make sure I'm going to draw it anyway. Because I'm not sure if I'm going to hit high on the next one, in the middle of the two balls. I will demonstrate a lot of this stuff in a minute, but it's just a story to tell you that there's no fixed formula in my book for the next to the rack break shot on these two balls. I've asked Schmidt about this, John Schmidt, Mr. 600, straight pool beast. He said he tried everything on those break shots. He would come in one day or a week, he would draw every break shot, it would work great, and then he would scratch. Then the next day or two days later, he would come in and follow all those break shots. Top spin, work great, and then he would scratch. He said in the end, it's written in the stars, he says. When it's your time to run a, make a U-turn, it's your time. You can scratch still with, in various different ways. So, I would suggest you take something that you feel comfortable with, go with that, and if you feel it isn't working for you anymore, or something's up with the equipment, sometimes it's super slick, it doesn't open up, then we make adjustments. Okay? Now, let's start. For example, if my tangent line says I'm going to hit the 12 full in the face. That would be right there. So as an example, <clears throat> a lot of amateur players, they would hit this break shot and they would hit it really nice and they would get stuck in the rack because they hit this ball full, they don't hit it hard enough, and the cue ball just dies. What we want to do, we want to give it a good boost where it comes back off the rack. Now, in general, I hit my break shots pretty firm because I want things open. That's just my style of play. First ball I'm going to hit. See? It doesn't get a lot of movement. If I would have hit it softer, I could have been stuck here. But I'm really happy with this spread. See, I, I kick it off the rack and I get a nice open layout. So, I'm going to do a lot of racking today, I know that. Let's say, guys, that we're going to hit, you know what, uh, can I put this somewhere, let's put it here. Let's say that I'm going to hit the low side of one of these two balls. So for example here, I'm going to hit low on the 15. Now the danger is, if we would stun it, you could carry them off the second ball and scratch in the side. So what I do, always, if I feel like I'm going to hit it low, I always draw it and I draw it firm. And I don't care if I get a little bit down table, I want these balls open. And I don't want to scratch in the corner there. See? Ho! Oh, but did you see that? I still got away from the scratch. And I have a shot. 
I can demonstrate that a little better, but that was actually a pretty good example that I hit it, I hit, still hit it pretty poor, but I got away from the scratch with the draw. Let's see if I can do that a little better. See, the tape is still a little slick. That's how, how much it likes to go in that corner pocket there. It's amazing. Let's try this ball. Same thing. Low on the six. There. See, I draw it to the side. I'm happy with that. I get a nice open rack. And that's how I like to hit my break shot when I'm going to hit it low on those two balls. Okay, now let's see one. This one's cool. Are you guys still there? Is everything going well? Everybody online? Yep. Cool. Okay. Now let's say that we're going to hit the 13 on the high side. So not full in the face, not low, but high. So now the cue ball has a tendency to go here, here, or off the side rail, and then back. We want to try to break the speed a little bit, the, pr uh, the process, with a little bit of a punch, one tip above center. So it's not a follow, uh, it's not a follow topspin, but it's a punch. It's middle ball. Let's see if I can demonstrate. See, it breaks. It breaks the speed. Nice little spread there. Let's see if I can do one more. It's also a break shot I like to start off my runs with a lot of times. I can put it really close to the rack. I would put it where it's just not full in the face. There. Check this out. That's a little bit of a follow, but you get the idea. I'm not coming backwards with stun, because that will bring me back in the kitchen. I like these spreads. This is good stuff. Um, okay, now a classic one. What if you're gonna hit the lowest ball? Lowest ball for that. Oh, wait. Before we go any further, one second, because I'm going too fast. Let me see, stone middle draw, highs ball, lows ball. Yeah. See, now two things I'm forgetting. Old school, old school straight pull is where they would just slightly draw off the rack, bring out three, four, five balls, and take it from there. That's old school straight pull. If you like that style of play, it's a purest style of old straight pull. Go for it. Nothing wrong with it. I feel personally it's a little bit more modern now. The game, is, the, the game can be a little more assertive. Open up the balls quicker and get your arm loose. I think that's for me personally the biggest key to make big runs. If I play it too nitty pitty picky, I'm going to get stuck. Especially match situations and tournament situations, I get I get frozen out. I, 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 I can't get loose. Where if I take more chance, open up the rack, then I get more in a groove and I get more confident. 
uh, I think it's more modern style of straight bow, and we see it more and more. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, if you don't get really good spreads like this, or if your balls are not as close to the rack, then I would highly suggest going for these kind of break shots. This would be parallel. So we have been looking at inside parallel, these shots. Now we go outside parallel, so it's a cut shot, right? And the great thing about these shots again is we don't even have to look at the rack. We can be totally free. All we have to do is put a nice high ball on it, make sure we pocket the ball, and the cue ball does the rest. Okay? Let me demonstrate. For example, these. Like, all I have to do is focus on making this ball. And I don't have to look at anything else, just topspin. The cue ball will do the rest. That happens a lot, you carry them off that ball, but you get beautiful spreads. Let me de demonstrate one more. And this works on any table. So if these are not really working for you that day, then try to look a little more, a little further up, and they can work up to here. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can shoot them from here. From here. All right, let's look at one of these. Look, just 12 o'clock. Don't have to look at anything. Boom. Man, those are so sweet. Look at this spread, guys. I mean, this is just delicious. I got a nice break shot here. Seven, maybe. I got the five. Everything's already open, right? Lovely. So keep those in mind. Those are powerful. Um, what else? Old school, modern, lowest ball. Let's have a look at those. The lowest ball. For me, that's, again, a little mystifying. Because textbook has it. Textbook says, kind of, that we go make this ball, make contact with that one, and then with inside spin, we go one, two, out to the middle of the table. I've had, I just have had bad results with these pretty much all my life. I, I just don't get really nice spreads. And of course, now we'll demonstrate, I'll open up seven balls. But in match play or something, I've had it happen where this ball would come out and one more ball, I'm like, why am I playing the break shot like this? It's not, it's not doing much. Let's see. See, for, I, I, for me, I can make this ball, but see the spread? I'm not digging the spread that good, that well, that much. So, is there an alternative? Well, <clears throat> I just like to play these just way more aggressive. And that's just my style. I'd rather hit this ball hard uh, with middle ball, go here, and maybe even go into them again. Take more risk on the cue ball, but try to get them open a little bit more. I will demonstrate. Here. So I'm going to hit it a little more speed and a little bit less pretty. There. 
I take a little more risk on the cue ball, so it's not it's not great. You try one more, but I get a better spread. So it's a little bit personal. See one more. It's a little bit of outside English. I might stay there and hit something that stops me from going down the table. just like that a little bit better personally it's hard to get really good spreads on that shot but I kind of like this one so keep that in mind let's continue with uh, under the rack break shots and these are really productive too guys I mean <clears throat> beginning straight pool players they focus a lot on uh, next to the rack, but actually under the rack works also really well. Plus, you're sending the balls a little bit more up table, so balls are not clustered up by the rail too much. You get nice spreads if you know what you're doing. So let's have a look at that. Classic one guys, a couple of classic examples. We have one where the ball is close to these two and there's one where it's kind of in the middle of the rack. When you're closer to these two the cue ball will hit the rail about here and with some right spin on this side we can bring it out towards the middle of the table. Okay? So it's not follow, but it's more... I, because I like to play them a little harder, for me it's more a punch. A punch middle top. It's not just a slow nice follow stroke. I want to put some energy into it. I'll demonstrate. So it's not stun. It's not middle ball, it's a, it's a tip above middle with right spin. And this is the danger, that's the only danger. You could scratch in the side. So that's one. These didn't open up too good, but you see the cue ball, it goes here. And with right spin, you can bring it back out. Let's demonstrate the one where it's in the middle. And the difference is this time the cue ball will not hit the rail here because it's going to make contact with another ball. So the cue ball hits the 14 then another ball and it actually goes this way. So, from this angle, we cannot bring it back here anymore. That's impossible. So, we have to help it go around the angles, this time with some left spin from this side. Let me demonstrate. You get beautiful spreads with this one. Oh, almost scratched. I'm going to try it again. But look at the spreads. Spreads are nice. And Try one more time. It's rare that you scratch the neck. <clears throat> Demonstrate from this side. Some helping English. Look at the spread. Beautiful. Now, exception to this one with inside is when 
the cut shop is too heavy. It works great from here, here, from here. I wouldn't use the inside spin anymore. The shot becomes too difficult. Then you just play it with high ball or maybe a tip of outside again. We just want to make the ball and take a little more chance on position. To pocket the ball here is more important than playing position. Okay? So as an example, oh, it's going to go from this side, I've got some stuff there. Here. So yeah, definitely don't want to play this with the inside. I want to make the ball, that's what I'm thinking here. See, that's fine. Lovely, scoring three points at once. See the spread? I mean, those break shots are great. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Let's look at another couple. Now here's one that you don't see a lot. What if you're... The only thing you have is this guy. This can still work pretty good. I mean, it would be ideal from here. But sometimes this is all you have, right? Now, again, if we follow this one, it could be that we're coming closer to the scratch now because we're going to hit a ball, maybe another ball, and come there. Here, I would like to draw it more. You draw into these two, comes here. And with some left English now, we bring it a little bit out towards the middle. Not going to get a super big spread, but we want to keep our run going, remember? Okay, didn't grab as much, but I'm still running balls. Let's try one more. See, this is an exception. Let's see if I can draw a little bit more to the rail. There, I caught this ball again, otherwise I would have passed that one. Still have the 12, 14 inside maybe. Not bad, right? I can go into the balls again from the 5, or maybe the 15. Freaky break shot, but I'm still at the table, because I knew what to do. Um, let's see. If you have any questions in a minute, let me know. What's up? What's up? Uh, what's my high run? Uh, I've run 416. Pretty nice little run. <laughs> also, 300 and a, a bunch of 200 plus ball runs. The 416, my, uh, my wife was racking for me. I think I've told this story before, but still, still a pretty cool story. We came back from the World 8-Ball Championships in Fujera. Uh, it's about, that be about 10 years ago. And the European Championships were coming up, so I wanted to get in touch with my straight pool again, but I caught the flu. I felt really weak, I felt sick. Uh, but at that time, I had the table on the floor above my house, we built an extra floor on the house, also for future uh, investment, the uh, house would be worth more, blah, 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 before we moved to Denmark. Um, table was there, I said to my wife, I'm just gonna hit balls for 30 minutes, and uh, you come back out, uh, you come up when you want to, because she was also gonna play European Championships. So, I get up there, I run, I run 42 balls in half an hour. I felt so weak. So Cat comes up. He says, uh, what's going on? I said, I'm a 42. If I miss, uh, table's yours. I'll just uh, finish it a little bit because I've only done 42. I get to 100. And uh, I kind of start waking up a little bit. And sometimes when you're really weak and you don't really care that much, this is not the way to go. But it happens on occasion. 
uh, you're just totally free in your mind, in your body, no, no expectations. So I start running from 100 to 200. Then I get to 200 and the record at that time I believe was 292 from Nick. And I get close to that number and I start getting really nervous because nobody ever ran 300 and my last balls were really tricky. I had to make a long cut shot, another tough long one and I got to 300. I got over the hump from 300 to 400 it took me 20 minutes. And then uh, I was on 416 and I missed a uh, ball to the corner pocket because I had to break open a little cluster here and I wobbled the ball on 416. I think it took total took about three hours. Uh, amazing run. I had one break shot I remember that I showed you before. Cue ball was here, object ball here with the top spin. And I carried off a ball and the cue ball went three rails in the corner. This was on like uh, 270 or I can't remember, a high number. And I was like, woo, I dodged a bullet there. And then that's what you need. That's what John Schmidt said. If it's your day, sometimes it's your day, right? You're going to run that big number. And the other day I might have scratched. So anyway, that was, uh, that was a great run. So uh, there's also great shots, for example, like this one where you're far out from the rack. Here, amateur mistake is that they play into the full side of the rack. What happens? You get stuck a lot of times. You want to try to play for the outside balls because you're coming in with a more, a more of an angle, so the cue ball wants to go away from the rack into the freedom. If you come here, you get stuck a lot. So we're aiming. I usually do this. I would get up here, guys, and I will look at a spot on the rail where I want to hit. So it's about here. And then I visualize it just like playing nine ball, and playing position to go down table, for example. <clears throat> See, I hit it a little bit too full, and you can see that it wants to get stuck there. Let me demonstrate one more. It's because I hit it a little firm. Then the draw doesn't grab as fast. I will hit it a little bit smoother this time to demonstrate. You can do it all the way from here. There. That's a great example. It grabs those two outside guys and it continues here. We get a nice spread. Right? If you've never seen that shot before, that's a weapon right there. Because you think it's not a break shot, but it sure is. <clears throat> Basically, any shot on the table with the correct angle and knowledge is a great break shot. You don't always have to get that standard next to the rack break shot. But you got to have the correct angle. So now, let's say I'm over here. Now, it's very hard for me to go get myself an angle like this into the rack that I could have done from this side. I'm going to I'm going to hit them pretty Can you guys see this? I'm going to hit them pretty square, pretty straight. So what do I do now? Well, now I have to hit them with more force. Not super hard, but I need top spin. Remember when topspin hits the rail, then it's, it's going to reverse the cue ball. So it's going this way, and then it makes contact with the 11, and it's going to go away from the 11 faster. So I don't want to baby this one, that's for sure. I want to get away from this rack. So a nice high ball.
streaky break shot. <clears throat> See, I wouldn't be too unsatisfied with that one. I got the seven in the side. Let's do one again. The cue ball will never be in a, an awesome position. What I'm looking for is not getting stuck. I want to get it away from the rack and I'll take my chances from there. Let's try another one. But you could see the top spin, once it hit the rack, it went backwards. That's what I'm looking for. That is not very helpful for a big run. Make sure you chalk. Because I want to put so much topspin on this guy. See? I'm getting it away from the rack at least. Give me a shot! Nine ball in the corner. I got a shot. One of the sides not easy, so I'm always going to be shooting from here. That's how it is. It's not an easy break shot. Okay. I forgot one more guy. That's this one. Check this one out. Same principle as the one, uh, the one two balls before. This one. Again, we don't want to come in here because we're coming in straight. We're going to get stuck. Now, again, if we can play here, Cuba wants to go away from the rack. That's helpful. So I'm aiming over here. Play it like nine ball, guys. You're playing position to get down table. Forget about the rack. Too thick. Try it again. I hit it too thick. This one doesn't come up much, but still, it's about the concept of playing it with an angle into the rack. Not great, tough break shot, I want to demonstrate a little bit better to go that way, but you get the idea, go for that steeper, steeper angle. Um, the one with the top spin, that one is linked to this one. We've all had this one before, right guys? What's the biggest enemy on this break shot? Again, hitting it too sweet, getting stuck in the rack. Use that top spin to get away from the rack. Now if you're lower, now you have to come back up. But if you're like parallel, if you're parallel to this line, and this line, this line, we want to use that top spin to get it away from the rack. Let's see. There. See, that's the only risk that it goes that way. At least I'm not stuck. This is a little bit unlucky. I only have one shot. Let's try one more. See, we're, we're doing some break shots that are hard, so the guarantee of getting an easier shot is not always there. <clears throat> we have to work our way back into a favorable position. There, the top spin really helped me to break the, the cue ball. You can clearly see it. 
This is a really nice spread. So good example there. Um, let's see, under the rack. La 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 la. See. We also can use these brake shots, guys. When you're close to the pocket, these are really strong. Um, I'll demonstrate in one second. From here it still works. From here, as long as you're close to the rail, from here it's getting really hard. This is too tough. The cue ball will start turning, curving. But when you're close to the to the short rail, there's a lot you can do. And there's nothing wrong with this brake shot. Again, we want to go into the rack at a steep angle. So I'm kind of aiming at the paper now. And a good tip guys, a good tip here, don't play it with uh, topspin. Like these shots, don't play it with topspin because the cue ball is going to curve away from the rack. You want to play in stun or draw. Like the closer they get to the uh, rail, you can put some more draw on it. Like here, let's try this guy. This I would stun. Or thin with a little bro. Here we go. Okay. A little bit unlucky, I got stuck, but you can see Cubo went out, came back in. That's what I'm aiming for. All right, one more. Really strong brake shot. Um, do it from here, guys. See, even this works. Nothing wrong with this. This one I would draw a little bit more and play it for this diamond. Boom. That's pretty sweet. I'll take that. Nine in the side. See, it was an under the rack brake shot. Everything's wide open. Let's see. Also from here, guys. This is not the end of the world either. Let's try that one for fun. Put some ball. This one's a bit tougher. Because I'm not going to hit it from underneath, I'm going to hit the side and almost guarantee the cue ball will go there. So basically I want to try to hit the 6 as full as I can, which would be hitting the rail here, that's what I'm trying to visualize. Stun, thin, boom, take my chance, I'll take anything here. Oh man. That's a little unlucky. I got the nine and a combo. Could have ended up here or here down table. You get the idea. It was a little bit funky, but you can get a decent spread. Uh, let's go to side pockets, guys. Any questions so far? I'm doing a lot of break shots. <clears throat> How about on the rail? How about off the rail, but from the long rail? What is that? Uh, Fagelis, can you explain better what that is? Oh, there it is. Oh, I already showed it. Okay. Little run. Okay, I hope you guys are enjoying this. All right, we're going for some side pockets. 
I have at least four or five got, uh, side pocket breakers. Now, here's a basic one that we all know from Snooker, dead center, and you can really start your runs with this if you're playing the Ghost. This is a nice one. I used to start with this guy here where I would hit a middle ball. But here, the cue ball will stay down table and you get massive spreads and you're off and running. Basically, if you're a decent straight pool player, this is one rack for free, right? That's how you have to look at it. I got the 14 for the next rack, perhaps the 6. Um, so that guy works really well. If you have a ball in the middle of the table, maybe you have a few balls close to it and nothing there, this can work really well. You saw the result. Now, what if that's not available? But there's other balls by the side pocket. What if a ball, for example, is hanging in the side pocket? What do you do now? A lot of players, even professionals, they would just hit the crap out of this ball. And what happens is, 30%, 40% of the time, you would hit this, 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 scratch in the corner. Everybody that's a straight pool player says, yep, I know that feeling, horrible feeling. You know what's interesting? I learned this from Laley, Alex Laley. Uh, he draws, he, he plays this ball with draw. So he aims for the side of the rack and he draws it away from the rack so you can never scratch. It's a really powerful way. If you can catch those two balls there, with this, is no good guys, you have to draw it to the rack. Always try to be on the same uh, long rail, that way it's much easier. See I'm drawing away from the rack, I hit that on the high side, look at the spread! Nice! I love it! See that's great, let me try if I can hit a ball lower. But I didn't even hit that ball that hard. Get massive spreads. That's how you run 100 balls, guys. Get the balls open. Don't be playing three balls out and babying it. Get them open. Run out. For crying out loud. <laughs> Here we go. A little thinner. I was still full, trying to catch that lower ball, but you can see I'm, I'm never going there. Last attempt, because I like this one, because I'm never going to miss it for you guys. <laughs> there. Trying to hit the 5 or the 10. A little thinner even. There. That's what I wanted to show. I mean, isn't that crazy? I'm coming in from this angle, hitting that one, I'm drawing back to the rail. I think that's funky as hell. Look at the spread. It's not like I did anything massive. Right? This is all, this is all knowledge. So thanks to Alex for that one. That's like a guaranteed rack. Right there. Boom. All right, now, guys, let's say we're over here. We've got this guy. We've got a couple of balls here. Nothing wrong with this one. You keep your angle. This is not enough. This might be too much. Anything like this, nothing wrong with that. Maybe check out your tangent line. To the pocket, this is 90 degrees, so we stun it, it might just pass the nice side where we want to hit. So, stun is no good. Top spin, top spin might be pretty good. I'm thinking I'm going to curve 
into the 11-13. That's what I'm going to play, guys. Top spin. Boom. Hallelujah. I'm getting stuck a lot with you guys. Check it out. Two off. Still playing. Anyway, that was to demonstrate. But you see the power in that one. Pretty nice little spread. Now. Here we come. With a couple of funkier ones, guys. And these have kept my run going for a long time. Where is the ball? Two ball. What do you do when you're like this? This is your break shot. Or this is your break shot. Right? Now, we go two rails, and again, we want to use that steep angle. We don't want to go here because you get stuck. You want to hit the 11 and 6. And we saw before, we get pretty nice spreads. So let me visualize this one good. It's kind of a middle ball. Caught the middle of the rack, but still... Hmm, I think I can hit that one a little bit better. So that meant I hit it, I hit too full in the rack. It meant I hit too high on the cue ball. Is that right? No, I hit too low on the cue ball. But you can already see it's not a major deal if you have this angle. You can still do a lot with this ball. Bam! Check it out. Check it out, guys. One ball, floop, and we're off and running. Okay? So a nice little one there. What about this one? Check this one out. We can't go two rails anymore, but this time we're going to slam dunk it one rail right into the side of the rack. And I'm not going to play position, I want these balls open. This ball is laying right there with his mouth open. I'm not going to baby this one. Get it anywhere there. Up, up, see? Look at the spread. Lovely. So that's a couple of side rails. I got one more. Side block it. Got one more classic one. <clears throat> Let's say you end up straight in on your key ball. Let's uh Let's say you wanted to play this break shot, but you got straight in on your last key ball, somewhere here, or whatever. So you could draw all the way back, get this, or you could play stop shot and get this, right? This could work too. We have to figure out where we're gonna hit it. Tangent line. Gonna hit the six about there. So I think a stun shot would work. Not the greatest, but it's not bad. Got the 14. Let's try one more. Again. Show you that there are multiple options for break shots. I've already got about 30 of them, I think. And I can keep going. But let's do a few more. Let's see. 
Thing when I hit between the seven and four, I'm going to play this one with more middle ball. There. Man, that's crazy. Uh, seven, I got the seven, I can draw back for the nine. And then, I can still do something here. I got the six, Let's see what I would do. Play the eight, looking at the eight. A little, a little thin I was trying to get here. Bad. Okay, got that one. Uh, think, think I got one more in my toolbox, and that is kitchen break shop. You see, I got under the rack, side pocket, mid side pocket, kitchen. Yeah. I uh, I remember when I won my second European title in Poland, uh, playing Tom Storm in the final. Storm, a massive straight pool player, and uh, I remember when I was on a seventy ball run, I think, in the finals. I didn't have a great end pattern, but. I had a couple of balls in the kitchen and I had this guy. And this guy works great, pool players. All you have to do is one rail and slam dunk it into this area. All right, play this with some speed. It works here. You can do it from here, here. You need a nice angle. All right, too far from the rail. And it's much harder to do. Uh, this doesn't work. You gotta have that open angle and the freedom to hit about to the middle diamond. So I had about this. Boom! Check that out. And I'm hooked on the 12. No, I got it. So I did that in the match, closed out the game, won the second title. I remembered that break shot, I've played it a few times over the years. It's just to show you that no panic yet when you have a ball here or here. You can still do some serious opening with that one. Okay? Uh, that's about it for now guys with the break shot. Break shots, I've hit about over 30 break shots I think. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if, there's, if there's one that you want me to show again. And remember, if you want to go more in depth on straight pull, we can always do a lesson. I've had many guys where we do straight pull patterns online. It's a lot of fun. And uh, that's available to you. So. I don't think there's any questions. Then uh, I just want to say PayPal donations are also highly appreciated. The link is in the uh, comments below. I uh, just want to wish everybody a nice day, a nice Friday. Hope you enjoyed this. Try it out in practice. Uh, this will definitely improve your open rack play and make your runs higher. It's a lot of fun to make high runs in straight pool and it's a great tool to see your improvement as a player. If you're a 40 ball runner, it's great that you're seeing yourself going up to 60, 70, 80 and then that challenge to get to your first 100, right? That's, I mean, that's awesome. So pick up this game and uh, make some high runs. Let me know how it's going in the comments on YouTube and uh, also here. And uh, this one will be uploaded on YouTube in a few hours so you can always look it back and uh, if you have any questions shoot me a private message take care